morning. Hello, you are very welcome today to our EU Clusters Talks. I'm sure most of you joining are familiar with the European Cluster Collaboration Platform on behalf of the European Commission's DG Grow. Today we're going to be talking about cluster policies and networks in, and indeed the outcomes of the expert group on clusters. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. My name is Jennifer Baker. I am going to be your moderator this morning, guiding you through the agenda. We're also going to talk about a lot about what the group has identified and talk about the best practices and share those in terms of modern cluster policy and development at national and regional level. And those things have boosted the modernization of industrialization, entrepreneurship, and the competitiveness of European businesses, particularly SMEs. So we're going to hear all about that and all about the expert group. So thank you very much for joining us. We will have an introductory uh, remarks and uh, setting out the scene for us from the European Commission, from Peter Zaga. We will then hear about national cluster policies before moving on to our panel debate. And then of course, Alt, always at the end of today's session, you'll hear about the examples of national cluster funding. So without any uh, uh, other further uh, ado, I'll urge you all to use the various functions, use the chat function to tell us where you're joining from, uh, warm up your fingers and get talking this morning. Please use that also to use that for, for, for sort of interaction, a little bit of networking on the side, but use the Q&A function to ask specific questions of our panel. If you would like to join the discussion, if you have something to add, you can use the raise hand function. Simply do that and we will uh, have a look and give you the opportunity to unmute yourself and join in the discussion over the next hour or so. If you want to be on video, you should just say so as well. Uh, use the chat function or, or get in touch directly via the various channels and we will activate your camera as well. So we would hope that. Obviously, as always, this session is being recorded. So if you do unmute yourself or use your camera, be aware that you will be recorded. And we hope that that will provide an opportunity for those of you. If you miss something, if one of our panelists says something interesting that you want to hear about again, then you can go back and view the video at a later date. So please do that. Also, remember, we have the hashtag EU Clusters Talks. If you want to share on social media to get your colleagues who are maybe having a lie in this morning, if they would like to still get involved later on, you can use that hashtag to get people uh, further beyond today's event involved. So I see many of you joining in the chat from all the way from, uh, from Spain, Italy, Heidelberg, Gothenburg, all the way north to Finland. So very, very good morning to you. Thank you very much for joining us. With that, I am going to say that I think uh, we, we've uh, given the various details. For those of the speakers, remember, keep your camera off and yourself on mute until it's your time to talk, just so that we keep the screen nice and clean for all our participants. But uh, do remember that you can always raise your hand and send us a message if you want to join in the discussion. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand over the floor now to Peter Chaga, who is Policy Officer at DG Grow within the European Commission. Peter, give us an introduction to this expert group. Tell us what the group has been working on and, and, and what we need to know about for today. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Jennifer, and good morning to everybody. I'm uh, very happy that so many of you joined this uh, this edition of the EU Cluster Talks uh, this uh, morning. Uh, so, I mean, those of you who are listening, I'm sure most of you are aware that uh, in the European Commission in DG Grow, we are working on a number of uh, initiatives uh, and programs uh, uh, that are helping European clusters to grow and collaborate with each other. Uh, a lot of our actions are we are doing are directly supporting cluster managers and the members of clusters, but beyond these targets, beyond this area, we are also working a lot on government policies uh, that regional, national, and local authorities are applying and implementing to support cluster development in their respective country, region, or city. So we try to, to understand, to analyze, to compare these policies uh, used by various governments, and we also try to collect and share some good practices that 
that policymakers can learn from when they are designing or implementing their own uh, policies. Uh, so I would like to explain very briefly in my introduction that uh, the work that we've been doing on, uh, on cluster policies have been uh, primarily done in the framework of the European Expert Group on Clusters. So this is a formal expert group of the, of the Commission. Uh, that has been operating for four years, uh, starting in 2018. And just last year, we had our final wrapping up uh, meeting uh, here in uh, Brussels. Uh, so this expert group is made up of uh, representatives from each uh, EU member states. These uh, members are nominated, but also we had 10 independent experts who were selected through a competitive uh, process. And uh, these independent experts, uh, they have a very diverse background. Uh, some of them are cluster managers, others are academics, consultants, uh, representative of cluster associations and, uh, and networks. But what they all share is a, a very strong knowledge and experience about uh, European clusters and European cluster policies. So we believe that the strength of this group was that it uh, it was bringing into one table all this variety of practitioners uh, from uh, from various actors related to the cluster landscape. So this uh, this group that was made up of uh, very dedicated members has been working in the last four years, and they had two major deliverables that they produced. Uh, uh, one of them is the is a recommendation report on cluster policies. Uh, this was uh, developed by the group and then adopted at the end of 2020. It has 15 recommendations to cluster policymakers and also cluster managers how to work on the green transition, how to work on the digital transition, and how to work on strengthening resilience with the help of, uh, of clusters. And, uh, and we believe that this became, this document, this report became kind of a reference document that uh, a lot of practitioners has been using uh, in the last few years. So one deliverable is the report, and the other one is uh, the so-called EU Cluster Policy Toolkit. And this is a searchable online database of uh, cluster and cluster-related uh, policy practices. Uh, we have around 200 uh, practices right now in this database, and uh, about, a about a 100 will be added in the coming days. And I put the, into the chat the link to, to both of these uh, of these tools. Uh, so I recommend you, I encourage you to, to use it, to go and check it out and see you know, how you can apply it in your own work, uh, in your area of uh, activities. Uh, so today, I'm very pleased that we have uh, four members of this expert group here with us. You know, two of them from, from governments, one cluster association member, one cluster manager. So it reflects the, the group. And, uh, and I trust that, uh, you know, through the conversation with them, you will be getting uh, very good insights uh, about uh, how cluster policies are made, uh, what constitutes a good cluster policy from the viewpoint of the governments, from the viewpoint of the of the clusters and from the viewpoint of uh, of the cluster members so i'm happy and and i look forward to to learn uh, from them uh, together with you today that's from me thank you very much peter and i know you are going to stay around for our panel discussion later on and i may even chime in especially if people have particular questions for you so we appreciate that thank you very much indeed we're going to hear now from Jan Philip Kramer, who is a team member of the European Cluster Collaboration Platform, about the national policies. So, Jan, over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, and uh, warm welcome also from my side. Uh, I'm part of the ECCP team, and we had the pleasure to look into the various national cluster policy efforts within the last uh, few months. And I will give you a very, very short overview of our report, which will also be available today, so you can look uh, further into the details. So just to, to introduce what is in the report, um, we have uh, this summary report that I'm referring to today in my presentation, which is about 50 pages long and has a more comparative overview uh, of the different uh, efforts. But what lies behind it is uh, a national research on 53 fact sheets from EU, COSME, and priority third countries. 
Um, and we have updated uh, a research that had been done in 2020, and we've included uh, three additional countries that are of interest. Uh, this is all very recent information. So the research has been done uh, over the summer into the, the fall, and uh, there has been also validation uh, ongoing uh, both through national authorities and also through our um, network of the European Cluster Association. As I said, this report is very comparative. We will, if you look into it, we pro provide you an overview of the EU cluster landscape and also the importance of cluster organizations and clusters overall in the European economy. Uh, we look into the European cluster initiatives, some of them that have been already mentioned by Peter, but also, of course, and that's the core focus, looking into national programs across uh, Europe and uh, summarize them in the state of play um, of the cluster efforts. So. Hello, Jan. I don't know if you've frozen for everyone or if it's simply a small technical hitch. Hello, Jan. Hi. I think it's... Oh, dear. I think it is. From looking at the chat, I think it has frozen for everyone, indeed. Um, Jan, unfortunately, I think your connection is broken. Uh, if you can hear us, uh, if perhaps you could rejoin and we will come back to hear the rest of your slides and responses later on. But for now, I think uh, we, we'd got to a possibly a halfway point in Jan's presentation. So let's call it a break there and turn instead to our discussion with the panelists. If Jan rejoins us, we will, of course, uh, come back and hear the end of his presentation at the end of our discussion. And we will also share the rest of his slides with you uh, via, via the link there. That's not a problem because, of course, today is recorded and we will be able to share that with you on the platform. So Unfortunately, technology gremlins have rendered him unable to finish his presentation, but we will come back to it and make sure you receive all the information. So our panel debate today is going to be a discussion about the expert group. What about the outcomes? How do we look at those outcomes? How do we evaluate them? And how do we build on what they have found? So I'm going to ask uh, my panel to switch on their cameras. We have joining us Alberto Pezzi, who is the senior manager at ASIO, which is the regional government of Catalonia. Agata Wancho is director, deputy director of the Innovation and Industrial Policy Department at the Ministry of Economic Development and Technology in Poland. Antonio Novo is president of the European Clusters Alliance and Bianca Mundin is a cluster manager from the Transylvania IT cluster. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. Now, Jan, before he got so rudely cut off by technology, uh, was mentioning the transitions. We heard all about the big transitions that we know about in Europe, the IT, the digital transition, and of course, the green transition, the need to be sustainable. And within all of that, because of the times we live in, we talk a lot also about strategic autonomy. But I'd like to hear from each of you in turn about the uh, the 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 expert group, what have been the outcomes, what you think we should be focusing on, and your own personal particular experience and views on that. So, Alberto, let me start with you. Uh, please give us an idea from your perspective what you think the main themes are. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this very interesting debate. Well, actually, uh, I think that the work of the expert group, uh, uh, as uh, Peter was uh, uh, saying in his in introduction, uh, uh, from one hand, uh, uh, some practical, tangible results that uh, are uh, this recommendation report and the toolkit, and uh, really, uh, I will focus more on the on the first one in which uh, I contributed more. I think it's uh, really uh, uh, a recommendation report that uh, um, tackle all the uh, important issues that are hot and the hot issues that are or. Um, out today in Europe, uh, these uh, twin transition, digital and uh, and green transition, but especially also I would like to um, 
uh, stress the importance of the of the uh, recommendation on the uh, resilience part. This probably is a part that uh, uh, was not foreseen to be so important uh, at the, with the creation of the group that was pre-pandemic. And but uh, it turns uh, to be very very important. So the fact how the the, the uh, SMEs and clusters, uh, especially in Europe, could uh, uh, be more more resilient uh, to to uh, the the, the uh, an environment that a business environment that uh, is more and more turbulent, uh, not only from uh, for for. Uh, for uh, what happens uh, uh, the, 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 uh, in general uh, in terms of the global markets and whatever, but also the, the important disruption we had uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the after, immediately after the creation of the, of the group, uh, uh, like the pandemic and then a war in Europe. Uh, uh. So I think, uh, uh, but also in this sense, uh, uh, a crisis uh, is also an opportunity also, uh, also for, for uh, for uh, growing, for uh, uh, rethinking things, and uh, and I think there is a lot to do uh, there in uh, in this part of the resilience, uh, especially uh, on uh, on the on uh, the foreseen uh, foresight activity that also have been started from uh, from the Commission, but uh, that is uh, one of the suggestions from the uh, uh, recommendation report in this sense, but also promoting a new way also of doing business and. Uh, I especially uh, uh, promoted this, uh, uh, trying to, to to promote in Europe this concept of share value that we are working here in Catalonia. And uh, so the fact of uh, approaching uh, a new approach to capitalism, a new approach on projecting that are bringing at the same time uh, uh, an economic and a social value. And uh, this is uh, something that, of course, need to be developed. Uh, the, 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 the report uh, that are, uh, need to be translated into, into, into project, and uh, this take times. Uh, then uh, I say that at the beginning that this is uh, uh, some tangible uh, report, but uh, there is also uh, an important, uh, maybe more on the sphere of immaterial capital. Uh, through this, uh, all the me this meeting we had, uh, uh, most of them uh, online uh, uh, during the, the three years of uh, uh, functioning of, of the expert group, uh, I think we built a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge. We 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 share a lot of uh, interesting insight uh, from people from different backgrounds, uh, from the government side, from the uh, private sector, from cluster manager, and so on. And this is really uh, what how cluster uh, dynamic works. So to to, to put a, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, smart ideas together and and and, uh, and smart people together and try to to uh, to to uh, to have uh, interesting outputs and I think this is something that uh, uh, is still a lot of potential to to release and uh, in some way uh, we will see the result uh, in the years to come. Thank you very much Alberto. Agata let me turn to you. Alberto set out very clearly uh, obviously the digital and green transitions were foreseen but we can't always plan for everything and of course uh, the pandemic, war in Ukraine, these things have been shocks to our European system. But through the clusters, we're trying to help manage that and deal with them. So tell me a bit from your perspective with the expert group. Good morning to everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me. <clears throat> Actually, I think that uh, cluster policy um, uh, more or less is um, uh, the same as it, um, as it comes to the main elements before the crisis, during the crisis and after the crisis. Maybe the emphasis is a little bit uh, uh, diff on different things, but the, the, the main benefit and the main aim of the um, cluster policy stays, stays the same. Because actually we have um, we have a new challenges, but competence that we built thanks to the clusters uh, stay more or less uh, the same. And the digital um, transition, green transition, the uh, of course the priorities in the EU and also in the um, policies of member states, uh, Poland uh, including uh, Poland. Uh, so we see the cluster. Um, actually, when, what is the um, most important uh, factor uh, in cluster policy now? It's build um, synergies, build synergies, and for us it means that um, to 
uh, work and cooperate with cluster to see uh, more synergies between different policies as industrial policy, innovation policy, education policy, uh, energy related policy. And uh, when we see the cluster as a, let's say, tool for all of this policy and we treat cluster as real partners, uh, then this way we can become more resilient because we, we see all these connections and the clusters know what is their role and their place in the ecosystem. Uh, so I think this is also the, the way how we can uh, be more resilient and become more competitive regardless of different crises, because we uh, always can have some uh, crisis. Uh, unfortunately, now we have crisis after crisis, uh, uh, two prizes in a row, but uh, I think that uh, the most important thing is to um, uh, create strong clusters and uh, prepare them for all different scenarios, let's say. Thank you, Agata. Unfortunately, you're right. One of the words that has become known is perma crisis, which is unfortunately not a word any of us would have liked to have to deal with, but it is there. Antonio, let me ask you to, to give us your perspective to build on what Agata said. She used the word resilient several times. This is more than just a buzzword. It's more than just the new sustainability phrase. It is something we need to think about. Indeed. Thank you and good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, I want to say that um, for me, this expert group on, on cluster has been a critical step, uh, personally, meaning that I have learned a lot and we have had the opportunity to really discuss at, uh, with, uh, with the representative of the different member states across Europe on the different approaches, you know, and that is, I would say, the most important aspect, the creation of a, a forum to dialogue between cluster practitioners and, and policymakers on what clusters can do and how can the, the policymakers really um, improve the implementation of cluster policies, you know. Uh, and it, it has been also, I would say, very important to have, uh, to have the cluster group during the uh, past crisis, you know, because it, it was also an opportunity to, um, to work together, to, to collaborate on some of the approaches that we have been taking. So for me, it's, it has been, um, uh, really, really important group. I, I vote for continuing in some ways with this uh, dialogue. And uh, I need to say that the, the report, the recommendation report, uh, has been extremely useful for our work as uh, cluster managers and as European Cluster Alliance. Why? Because, uh, you know, we, we are uh, in continuous dialogue with uh, many uh, entities, not only at regional or national level, but also here at the, at the European level. And it's very important to be able to justify your proposals with a formal document that tell us, tell them that there are clear agreements between member states and the European Commission and the practitioners on fitting, fitting very concrete areas of work, you know? And I, I can tell you, for example, we use it uh, for the recommendation on the transition pathways, you know, the documents that are planning how to uh, implement the very high level uh, strategies at uh, European level and that are shared by every actor in the industry. Uh, so we have been able to make those recommendations with clear reference to that document, that, that report. And as I said, this is extremely important for us. So one of my recommendations for those that are hearing us is to really he, uh, read it, but also use it for their uh, work, you know, 
or uh, supporting them on the recommendation to the regional governments or whoever is in, in dialogue with, with them. And as well, the, the Polish toolkit is, um, I would say, very good for, to learn what is being doing, do, done in, in, in different regions, but also to think about how could we uh, help from the cluster practitioner side our policymakers to think of, uh, on, on, on better uh, policy implementations, you know extremely useful again. So uh, I think that uh, we could speak a lot on, on the different recommendation of, of the fitting that has been made. Five are very concrete on resilience. And as you say, that is one of the uh, most important activities that our contribution that clusters can give now during the, this year and coming years to our uh, industrial uh, ecosystems, I would say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Antonio. And indeed, that recommendation report that you're talking about, about the twin transitions, uh, we've put the link in the chat. So if anyone wants to go and read that, they can do so. Bianca, let me turn to you. Give us your perspective. I'm sure you've lots of things that shine with what your colleagues, your fellow panelists have said, but I'd be interested to hear from you. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for having me in this panel discussion. It is always a great pleasure to, to see my colleagues and also to contribute to the enriching discussions we are having, because through this um, European expert group on clusters, we used um, uh, our experience, our grassroots experience by working with our small and medium sized enterprises all over Europe. So for us, it was very, very important to, to have a direct contribution and a direct dialogue with the policymakers. And um, the work done by DigiGrow team in the past three or four years was really amazing because clusters were not um, very well known at the European level. And uh, of course, uh, they have a great importance. And um, all the policymakers from the EU level, from the national level, but also from the regional and local levels have to be aware and also have to take into account all the efforts the cluster organizations are making all over Europe. And of course, we have uh, this uh, concrete result in the recommendation report on clusters where uh, we have been organized ourselves in um, the working groups, working group on uh, the digital transition, working group on the green transition, but also the working group on resilience. We also had some working group on the uh, skills and training part because uh, speaking about uh, the new skills needed and also about the direction the uh, economy and the SMEs are heading, uh, this new set of skills is highly needed. And um, of course, one of the main results um, of which I'm very proud of uh, together with my colleagues is the fact that Having these uh, new programs coming in, uh, Digital Europe, for example, and uh, having these new structures uh, which are being supported by the European Commission, we managed to convince, for example, uh, DigiConnect that the work made by the clusters all over uh, Europe in the past years has to be included in the newly European Digital Innovation Hubs structure. So it's no need to create parallel structure, but it's more efficient and useful to use all this knowledge, all this added value created in the past 10, 15, 20 years in some regions made by the clusters, also to use their competencies, their very close relation with the small and medium sized enterprises and to support in this way, the digital transition. So um, for me, it was a great uh, pleasure to also hear from the representatives uh, from the government of the member states, which uh, were part of, of our working group, and also uh, having uh, the chance to, to hear their perspective. 
because we are speaking from the perspective of a cluster manager, maybe some experts, but also seeing the approach uh, from the policy making part, it's very, very interested, interesting. And um, we, we came to the conclusion that the situation is quite different in different regions of Europe, but we have a common goal. Uh, and that is to, to make the difference, to support the European small and medium sized enterprises in their challenges and to come up with different opportunities and different support programs for, for them. And of course, uh, also the cluster um, organizations need the support, the support from the policymakers, the support from the national governments and also from the regional uh, bodies. And I'm very, very much looking forward to continue our work uh, in an informal way, but also in the future stage uh, of, of this expert group. And uh, I have to, to mention, of course, the cluster team from DG Grow, uh, who was really, really amazing and uh, open and uh, very, very close to, to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bianca. We're going to pick up on some of the points that you've mentioned in, in, there in your opening remarks, certainly over the next sort of 20 minutes or so. I will remind everyone joining that if you've got a specific question that you would like to introduce to the panelists, use the Q&A function. It's at the bottom of the screen. It's got a little bubble Q&A uh, in the chat. We are continuing to have the chats, but we're also sharing also links to various bits and pieces. I see Antonio has shared the toolkit there. And also there is indeed that recommendation report for those who want to read in detail uh, the recommendations of the expert group. Antonio, oh, sorry, Alberto, let me come back to you. Uh, Bianca spoke there about the need to avoid too much overlap, to, to avoid duplicating work. But tell me, there are main elements of cluster policies that share a common theme. It's not necessarily about duplicating work, but it's about understanding uh, how we come up with those policies. Tell me a bit about that. Well, actually, uh, uh, for cluster policy, we 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 intend a, a set of uh, coordinated actions. Normally, uh, uh, I will say that in generally in Europe uh, uh, and all over the world, uh, uh, these are uh, the cluster policy are set by uh, government by public policies, and. Uh, uh, there are a few elements that I believe that are uh, very important to, to have in mind when you, you are designing a cluster policy. Uh, first, that uh, each uh, uh, territory is unique. So uh, you can have, uh, uh, you can learn a lot from others, but then at the, at the, uh, the time you are uh, designing the, a cluster policy for, uh, for your for uh, your region, uh, your, your, your country, or, or, or also even at, at local level, uh, you, you have to take into account uh, the specificity of your uh, economic fabric and 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 also the, some uh, other social aspects. So, uh, I think it's very it's it's very important. Uh, so uh, another element that I think it's is very important is to to be uh, clear to have uh, clear in mind what is the objective and the purpose of. Uh, of uh, uh, while well, designing this class of policy, and for me here the 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 the, uh, the, the, the question the, the answer is very simple that uh, is uh, enhancing the competitiveness of firms. So we are not a uh, uh, cluster. I should be always intended as a tool for better understanding uh, uh, the the strategic challenges of firm, and uh, to implement it uh, in a more efficient way. Uh, cluster. A cluster policy could be, not be the hand. The could not be the the cluster could not be the objective. We we we, we don't want to 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 have a, a cluster because it's, it's on fashion or, or or because it's an, a nice and modern approach to 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 work with uh, with company. Cluster should serve in this uh, and have a, 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 a as as a tool. A tool with many many utilities eh? and a very useful tool. It's uh, as I said, is a tool that. Uh, uh, could help us to 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 better understand the challenges of of uh, a, a specific business sector, and uh, in this sense, it's very very useful also to change the dialogue that uh, uh, you can have as a government uh, 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 with companies. A more focused dialogue on uh, on the real uh, uh, strategic issues that are. Um, important from company and so this is uh, uh, a very very important part 
but also uh, it is uh, uh, also important for for uh, uh, for companies uh, in order to uh, identify possible um, horizontal collaboration uh, uh, with with other uh, firms and uh, and other agents uh, sometimes uh, we always always uh, talk about this uh, competition you are in cluster and that is totally true eh? and that, 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 that there are some uh, in 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 clusters they co coexist both uh, 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 well uh, companies that to be complementary but also companies that are, that are competing and uh, uh, one of the uh, important uh, uh, things of setting a cluster policy is to have this very clear in mind and and uh, to 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 see a bit the border of uh, and uh, and the rules of work of this, so that the creating uh, uh, opportunity for collaborating for company, but also uh, well just uh, 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 supplying uh, important information that uh, then everyone uh, every company could uh, use uh, for si shaping their own strategy. Uh, another element, and I don't want to to uh, to, to to take uh, to monopolize too much the time. Uh, for me, it's uh, to have be very clear in, in mind when you are setting a cluster policy that the, that uh, uh, that the, it's a dynamic uh, dimension. So. I think, uh, uh, for, for instance, here in Catalonia, we, we, we have a cluster program. Uh, our Catalonia cluster program is a program that is totally renewed every three years. And this is we, when we designed it. We wanted to do it because we, we have to uh, to have a moment uh, every three years to to rethink completely uh, if uh, what is work, what is do doesn't work, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, and so um, if we look back on the the past, uh, actually. Uh, on next Friday, we will celebrate uh, 30 years of cluster policy, continuous cluster policy in Catalonia. And well, I, I think you, it's a bit too late, but uh, you are all invited here in Barcelona. And uh, uh, what is a, a constant, the, the, if we look back, really, it is uh, the, the portfolio of cluster initiative we had uh, uh, 15, 10, 20 years ago, in order not to, to be back at the, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of all. It's completely different from what we have now. So one uh, element that is very important to set, to define uh, to design a class of policies uh, to have uh, uh, this. Uh, Flexibility to 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 know that uh, if a cluster a cluster policy should also reflect what happens in the market. The market also go forward that uh, from policies, and so you you have to be very uh, very uh, agile to to adapt on the, how the market are changing and to adapt also your policy. So uh, a, a dynamic and 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 changing also cluster portfolio is also I think an important element of this. Then there are other elements. I, I don't want to, uh, I say, to monopolize, but uh, the evaluation, evaluation also is very important for this, uh, for 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 providing of new information of how to reshape your cluster policy and 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 for continuous improvement. But well, I think this is a, a basically from a, my practical experience some some thought about about that. I don't know if we, we can uh, uh, give more in deep on the discussion. We are going to come on to evaluation because there's some, some questions I see coming up in the Q&A. But Agata, before we get to those, let me turn to you. Um, oh, we have people joining from all the way from Spain to Finland. And obviously the specificities of different countries are different. What is your experience in how a national cluster policy is created? Thank you for this question. <laughs> oh, as you said, I think that there are a common elements uh, of cluster policies across uh, all countries, and there are some specificities. And uh, um, the common thing, I think, uh, and um, the, a mask in cluster policy is to create, monitor, and evaluate cluster policy um, in a constant, strong dialogue. Uh, with the uh, cluster and environment, because they really can contribute to build a good cluster policy, which is aimed at their real needs and uh, problems. So I think that's the most important thing for us. And this is the way we are trying to uh, continue with uh, cluster policy. 
Um, the, uh, Alberto said uh, uh, also um, about many um, crucial elements of uh, important cluster policy, but uh, when it comes to the specific problems for countries and how to address them, uh, I think that uh, cluster policy apart from um, uh, clusters themselves, apart from the crucial importance for industrial policy, innovation policy, in Poland, the clusters uh, themselves are very important when it comes to cooperation and building trust. Uh, maybe for some regions, countries, it's an obvious thing, natural thing, but in Poland, the so-called social capital is still needs to be improved. And clusters are a medium that is very important to um, address this challenge when it comes to building trust and stimulate the cooperation among different entities, including companies. And we see this change, uh, that the, this is changing for better uh, within uh, the same clusters. And we know this for cluster, of course, that uh, some time ago, it was very difficult to attract uh, companies and to persuade them that uh, me as a coordinator, as a cluster manager, my team can bring a real value. And also other members of the cluster can really um, also bring important value. That there is a, a very important to do things together that is easier and quicker to resolve some problems together within the cluster. It was not so obvious some time ago. Now companies and uh, all, uh, universities, they can see this uh, value. And I think that the cluster managers in Poland did a a tremendous work when it comes to uh, address this problem and this is important but at the same time very difficult job and we really appreciate clusters for this. Well thank you very much Agatha I can hear actually from your expression that you're feeling quite positive so that's a really good thing. Um, I'm going to take a question uh, from our from those online Q and A's. Uh, hello Mark, Mark Patterson is joining from Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform. And Antonio is asking, what insights can you provide regarding the identification of key performance indicators to measure the impact of the cluster's role in securing those digital and green transition policy objectives? If you're doing something, you have to be able to measure it. So tell us about that. How, uh, what are the KPIs? Uh, indeed, the, the report has not uh, go deep on KPIs, you know, we were uh, looking for in defining uh, recommendations, actions, um, um, and so activity support that uh, could be of interest. But uh, we have not go deeper on on that uh, on that area, and that is good because that means that we uh, we have one area to work with on the on the on the future. As uh, expert group, I mean, because of course th there are KPIs and and we need to. Uh, I could refer how on, on EUCLES and how the labelization system measure the good management of the uh, clusters, you know. But um, it's I think some area to be developed. Okay. If you don't mind, I wanted to, to comment on the concept of clusters as tools. You know, I, I was referring before to the importance of creating a dialogue between uh, policymakers and, and cluster practitioners. Uh, I understand that clusters are tools, they can be tools, but for me, clusters are far more than just tools. You know, we are realities um, and realities created by the uh, by the environment okay the ecosystem the industrial ecosystems that um, needs the collaboration between the agents in order to be healthy you know and so to speak about clusters as just tools is like in my in my mind as you speak about doctors or hospitals as just tools you know we are a little more in my opinion. No? So uh, uh, that's why it's very, very important for, for us to speak about it and um, to, to, to uh, make um, uh, a stand on why cluster has a, 
real life, depending mostly on their members, industrial members, or who could be could be also researcher or you know, but uh, um, that needs to be understood and care. You know, it's okay. it's a two way dialogue. <laughs> It is. It's, it's obviously not one silver bullet that we say, this is the answer, take it and run away with it. Alberto, I see that you've raised your hand. You want to add something, please. Yeah, yeah. just uh, just to reply quickly to to, to Antonio, uh, my uh, affirmation that cluster are, are special tools is, was not a, a reduction of importance of cluster, but see, here probably we have to uh, go back to the basics. And uh, uh, sometimes I remind when, when I... Uh, um, Introduce as a probably to 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 uh, our general public uh, talking about cluster. I always uh, uh, remind this important distinction between the three, uh, at least three uh, meaning of the word cluster. Uh, we are a cluster as a reality. The cluster uh, exists in many countries, in many regions, uh, uh, exist uh, since many many centuries. The a cluster is a is a natural phenomenon of industrial economy uh, from which that the, the that the, there are some uh, the, for the creation of positive externalities, uh, companies tend to 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 uh, to cluster, and uh, the, the name came from there uh, around uh, uh, also in a geographic area, around the business geographic area, because it's more efficient to do this. And the, we have. Uh, uh, hundreds of examples around the world from the most uh, well-known like Silicon Valley, for, for, but uh, 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 other uh, small clusters, I can mention uh, uh, those and if you want uh, in Europe, but are natural clusters, clusters that are there since uh, sometimes uh, uh, centuries and uh, that they evolved. And uh, and this is a, is a reality, is a complex reality also under the point of view, not only con from an economic point of view, but also sometimes a, 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 a uh, a territory that is specialized in a, in a certain sector also this uh, have an influence on the uh, on the social uh, uh, aspect of the communities and eh? that, that this is uh, is very important and there are a lot of work done by uh, some Italian economists in particular I would like to to remind uh, Giacomo Beccatini uh, that is a pioneer in this sense then the second uh, exception of the world cluster is uh, about uh, the cluster initiative there are this reality, and some uh, and uh, um, about thirty years ago, some uh, uh, some governments, uh, some regions that, that, that started using cluster, especially after the publication of the Competitive Advantage of Nation by Michael Porter, that offer a practical framework for working with cluster, uh, and so they, they use cluster. Uh, and here st we are start introducing the word, uh, the, 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 the concept of tools for better understanding what are the challenges of, uh, of uh, that group of company because there are economy for scale there because uh, there are company with they are sharing the same strategic challenges and uh, there are also some other agents that are specialized in the territory that can help to, to shape this strategy. And finally, the third uh, exception of this uh, of the word cluster is a more uh, recent uh, uh, concept that is the, the concept of cluster organization. Sometimes when we talk, uh, we, we 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 do not distinguish between cl natural cluster, a cluster initiative, or cluster organization. The cluster organization is uh, something that is more, more recent. The first cluster organization, I think, that the, the oldest one are uh, uh, 20, 25 years, are uh, uh, organization that could be that are different from a, from a, a normal association but are uh, a, a, a sort of uh, uh, well an association created around uh, a cluster with the uh, objective to reinforce the competitiveness of the company the, with this with the objective of uh, uh, trying to find opportunity for working better with uh, uh, among of this group of companies and this is uh, uh, normally as the counterpart of the of the governments that are setting and implementing uh, cluster policy so in this sense i think a cluster and very convinced that there are more than tools especially the natural cluster as i say there but uh, at the end uh, when we when we go on the train of uh, of uh, of policies. Uh, for me, what I wa wanted to say in my intervention is that uh, we don't want to, the, 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 the uh, objective of the policy could not be to create a cluster. We, it, we, a region is not better if we have uh, more cluster than another or whatever. Uh, it's uh, We have to have the right cluster and the right cluster are the ones that are working for the benefits of, uh, of companies and, and creating prosperity in the territory. 
Thank you, Alberto. Bianca, um, we have a question. Uh, Jessica Chiappa Olason is joining us. Good very morning go to you, Jessica. Uh, she would like to know what makes a cluster successful? I'd be interested, Bianca, to get your thoughts. Uh, from uh, my perspective, actually, um, the success of the cluster is given by the satisfaction of its members regarding uh, its activity because uh, mainly these clusters, uh, cluster organizations I'm speaking of now, uh, they have to be very rooted in the regional and local uh, reality. And this is uh, what they are doing. I mean, except delivering some specific services. For example, in our region, we focus very much in uh, identifying concrete needs of our cluster members in order to identify uh, different services to reply to those needs. And uh, of course, in the, in the first place is there are the, the need for um, upskilling the, the workforce. And this is uh, a thing which we are doing for 10 years now. And it's the same need, it goes uh, on and on. Also another area in which uh, we are um, uh, providing services is support for innovation. It is very, very important for us, for example, uh, representing a mainly uh, outsourcing IT industry in uh, Eastern Europe. For us, it is very, very important to contribute to the uh, changing of the mindset and also of the business models uh, our member companies are using. And um, of course, there are many, many ways uh, to, to measure a cluster success. But I think that also one very important thing uh, the clusters are doing is representing them uh, in front of the policymakers and uh, being a voice for, uh, for their member companies to the regional, national and European level. But also in the other way around, the clusters are taking these EU policies and they are translating it, digesting it for the member companies, which maybe are not that familiar with the Brussels language or the nation policy language, but they are um, bringing uh, up from these companies, uh, these opportunities, and also these measures and these actions taken by the policymakers, which eventually will have a direct impact on, on them. Thank you, Bianca. Agatha, I want to come back to you because uh, another question that Jessica has put is how might a cluster get on board the journey to a green transition if they're not already fully there yet? Have you any advice from that perspective? Uh, thanks. Um, actually, we are in the initial <laughs> um, part of our work uh, as uh, regards green transition. Uh, I can say about what we are planning <laughs> to do in the nearest future. So we are in the process of uh, creating the so this is a, a pilot project, the green innovation hubs. And if the clusters feels that uh, it can play a major role in this domain, because some clusters are more um, digital oriented, some are from different spheres, which is of course connected to our smart specializations, but maybe not so uh, directly linked to green transition. The, the, let's say the green um, matter can be taken into account by all, by some clusters, I want to focus on this and um, we will uh, work with some of them on the um, uh, how to um, uh, provide them a little bit of uh, expertise and build first their competences to uh, uh, to enable them to uh, support their members uh, to um, uh, improve uh, their um, effects when it comes to green uh, circular economy. This is the, uh, one of the um, area they want to focus on. Uh, and this is also very important for, uh, uh, for the Polish economy. This is uh, uh, our priority in the years to come. So I think the cluster, of course, energy related to issues there are priority for all, but we also, uh, uh, there are some clusters they want to focus on the, how to create circular economy starting from their cluster. 
And I think that, that the main issue is to build competence because we are um, we are starting this exercise like in, in now. So maybe I can uh, follow uh, uh, two three years later and uh, say more about uh, eval about this uh, project and evaluation. Thank you, Agatha. Thank you very much. That's a good point to raise because my final question, uh, Antonio, to you is one about time scale. I've seen a couple of comments in the chat, not formal questions per se, but asking about whether a three year term is the right length. Should we be thinking longer term? Give me your perspective on, on timing. I think it makes sense to support the, when we are speaking about new clusters to support the infrastructure for some years. Uh, probably four years for me makes sense. Okay, it could be longer, it depends. Uh, generally speaking, our position is that as a European Cluster Alliance, is that uh, the support for, for cluster is important. And uh, if uh, the policymakers support clusters in growing uh, their capabilities, we are better uh, prepared to uh, to really help our members to grow more. And this is, in this case, for example, we are speaking of how we need to, how are we going to got or get those capacities that we need to support our members on green transition, for example. Even those that have been working on the market for 18, 20 years, uh, we are not so so well prepared for, because don't don't know about it. It makes sense for for the institutions to support them us on on getting do, that those capabilities. You know, so it's not for me. It's not only about the first four years. It's about uh, supporting the infrastructure of the, of the cluster uh, on uh, evolving through the different capacities that we are uh, needing through the through the time, you know, digital is, is the same. The ECCP is doing a very good job on, on that uh, area, I think, and the, and the, uh, and the European Commission, the, the team on DigiGrow. Uh, but we need also to involve the different national uh, national programs and regional programs on, on that support. So again, it's, in my mind, it's not only about the first four years, but to support the capacities the, the the growing of the cluster through the time, you know. Absolutely, this isn't just short termism. This is about making a real change and really delivering. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's nice to hear you all singing from the same hymn sheet, as it were. There's a there's a real joined up thinking. I'm getting a sense from from between all of you, uh, and thank you for the questions that those of us have sent in. I know there's more conversation to be had on this, but for now, thank you very much for this morning. I'm going to go back to Jan, Philip. Jan, you were very uh, unfortunately cut off there. So we've had a bit of a panel sandwich. We will come back to you now to hear the remainder. I know you're about halfway through your slides. We'll hear the rest of your comments now. So thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, apologies. It just shows how important energy security is because there was a power outage uh, that knocked me out here. So I will try to do my best and, and get back to the uh, presentation uh, and connect a little bit to this great discussion that I was able to follow thereafter. So um, just, just to get us back into, into the uh, report a little bit, um, we have uh, analyzed a total of 90 policies um, from the EU member states, but also, as I said in the beginning, from uh, third countries and uh, cosmic countries. And what is clearly visible for, from this, and I, I think that echoes the debate, is that the national or regional cluster policy approaches are widespread nowadays. There are varieties, of course, in the, in the way that uh, they are orchestrated if they are operating on a national or regional level. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, we find that uh, dedicated cluster policies, in particular in the European 27 member states, are a, a quite common um, thing nowadays. And uh, nevertheless, there are some specificities when it comes to uh, cluster support that is more included in sectoral policies or, or broader industrial policies, but I can't go into details here. I think it's very important to also emphasize um, that uh, by now we have uh, more than 1,000 cluster organizations organizations, uh, and Alberto gave you a nice definition already, uh, operating across the EU and also uh, uh, registered
implemented on the European Cluster Collaboration Platform. And I think this is really helping us to advance uh, the policy objectives. Um, before I come to this, just very quickly, um, it was just mentioned by Antonio how important it is to support clusters, uh, cluster organizations. And uh, of course, there are a number of European um, programs which are offered on, on a, a centralized level, but of course, also the uh, national efforts are key. And um, we have looked into this as best as we could. We came up to an indicative amount of around 6 billion euros across the EU uh, four core cluster policies um, that uh, are linked to 14 programs. So there, there is some, some activity going on. Uh, the Clusters for Future program in Germany is a quite large one with 450 million. There's one recent in, in Denmark, Clusters for Knowledge and Business. And we also heard already from Agata on the key national clusters in Poland. So you see uh, national initiatives are very important. Now let's look quickly at the key objectives. On the next slide, you see um, a number of items that we looked into, policy objectives that have been uh, targeted by different types of policies, ranging from national to regional, sectoral or broader industrial policies. And the top five items that you see on the, on the right-hand side in the graphic show you what cluster policies really focus at, uh, uh, at the moment. So it's about creating and enhancing visibility it's about supporting cluster excellence and professionalization of cluster organizations. And I think that also shows you, um, Alberto, I think you said it, we need to ensure that we make our companies more competitive and therefore you need excellent cluster organizations. Um, but on the same uh, side, uh, some you know, support of consolidation may be necessary because our industrial landscape changes and therefore also the cluster policy and organization landscape needs to adapt. And the fourth objective is looking into cross-clustering. Maybe that's even showing these connections that there is some con consolidation around uh, cross-sectoral uh, uh, industrial ecosystems. So these are very important points. Um, at the same time, you see that uh, items such as increasing supply chain resilience is not a, a main domain only for cluster policies, but it's also covered in broader industrial uh, policies. And last comment on this slide, supporting the creation of new clusters, new cluster organizations to be precise, is often not happening within uh, the more narrow cluster policies, but in fact, in broader industrial policies. So we see it's a, a bundle of uh, programs uh, that is relevant when looking uh, into um, the support to clusters and cluster organizations. Um, as you know, we have two important financial mechanisms, and we see this on the next slide. Uh, on the one hand, the next generation EU with the National Recovery and Resilience Plans, and of course, uh, the current um, financial framework for uh, the European Regional Development Fund. And we looked into this, uh, we looked into the National Recovery and Resilience Plans, um, and uh, we found that, in fact, 17 member states named clusters. I think this is a good result also from increasing the visibility of cluster organizations and cluster policy. And one example is, in fact, Spain, which uh, uh, is planning to promote clusters of the Association of Innovative Companies to modernize companies and to offer trainings for managers. And the same goes for uh, the ERDF partnership agreements, not the operational programs. These are still to be reviewed for the next report. Um, we found that in at least 11 member states of the partnership agreements, clusters are mentioned. Again, the example from Denmark, uh, which are planning to uh, support cluster development for international cluster to cluster cooperation and to create synergies with the Euro cluster initiative. So I think this already gives you an idea of the importance um, and that there are a number of also EU funded programs um, that are looking into cluster support. Um, now let's go to the state of play. Um, we have performed a uh, maturity assessment, which is looking into four dimensions, the policy approach, policy continuity, support instruments, and evidence of performance. And this has been established already um, in the last report of 2020, and we continued this year. So um, when looking into 
Uh, the policy approach, I already gave you the, the, the core picture. We do see that uh, 14 EU member states um, um, in the EU uh, have been operating cluster policies for more than 10 years. And it really resembles also what was said. It's a relatively established policy. Um, and uh, there's not, not so many new, completely new programs being introduced. Uh, but at the same time, of course, the, 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 the policy itself has been changing in the meanwhile, also in those countries which have already uh, introduced it for 20, 10 uh, years, uh, as, as was mentioned earlier. So I think this is one of the um, key messages here. Um, on the next slide, we see the support instruments. Um, I have already said that uh, it's, it's very important that uh, there are different technical, but also financial means to support cluster development. And we do see that in, in the majority of the EU member states, in fact, 80, 81% of the countries uh, do provide financial and technical support. So financial directly financing cluster organizations or having cluster organizations as beneficiaries in programs, or maybe setting up platforms in order to support the cross-cluster coordination uh, that, uh, that you see um, in some of the countries. So very key. Um, where we are not so happy, and I'm coming back to Alberto, who emphasized the importance um, of doing evaluation, is the evidence of performance. And you can see on the right-hand side that uh, although there are seven EU member states that do have monitoring and evaluation ongoing, there are also too many, from my point of view, which do not. Right. So we, we have uh, both within the EU, but also uh, outside the EU, uh, still a, a gap of evidence for the effectiveness um, and um, importance of cluster support uh, that we need to close. And this brings me to my final um, summary slide on the maturity scoring. We have uh, assembled this uh, in a very simple graph and you can see that the EU27, when it comes to the policy approach is quite mature. Um, the continuity of the cluster policy is also satisfactory, but as I said, evidence of performance is uh, in comparison, not the worst, but it still needs to improve. So I think this is really uh, the key message that we have here. Um, and um, my uh, take on the question, why is so important, um, Nina, if you can move me already to the um, next slide, is we see that cluster organizations and also the presence of natural clusters, as was uh, explained uh, earlier. So uh, sectoral agglomerations that are important for regions or industrial agglomerations, which are important across the European territory, do have a positive correlation, at least, with key indicators. Uh, so uh, we, we looked into uh, the GDP per capita. There is a positive relation with the presence of cluster organizations. We looked into the uh, employment in technology and knowledge intensive sectors. There is a positive association with the presence of cluster organizations and even more so regional or industrial clusters. Um, and I think this is a very important message also for the policymakers. Yes, there is a lot of uh, positive outcomes um, that we can observe. And to pick one of the questions very quickly, uh, there are also elements of green and digital transition, which we can try to measure here. So we see, for instance, that um, uh, the share of ICT in the cross value added is higher and there's a positive correlation, at least uh, with these uh, three types of uh, entities that we look at. And the same goes for uh, green employment or employed ICT specialists. So this is uh, giving some light on this. Um, to wrap up and come to my, my key suggestions, um, I think some of them have already been mentioned. We need to further learn. So the policy toolkit, which has been put together uh, based on the recommendation of the uh, expert group is one of those tools which enables us to learn. So please have a look. We need to strengthen monitoring and evaluation efforts still. I think this is very key. And maybe to pick a final one, we need to enable sustainable business models for cluster organizations to make them remain central in the ecosystem. And there are needs for some public support, but also, of course, uh, private financing of these uh, activities. And sorry, I had to run through. Uh, I did my best to give you all the key um, um, information in this report. Please have a look. Uh, it's a 50 page report. It's easy to read. And uh, I, I look forward to your feedback. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Jan. And indeed, uh, many of you are asking as well, will the slides be available? They will, so people can go back and have a look at that. And although you rapidly ran through it, today's event is recorded, so people can go back and listen again if they need to. We're running over time, so I'm going to hand straight over now to Nina Hopman from the uh, ECCB to tell us about the latest funding examples. Nina, over to you. Thank you very much. And I just wanted to, uh, as we usually do uh, at the end of our EU cluster talks, to talk a bit about funding. Uh, this time uh, we um, have two examples of uh, cluster funding and um, national policies since this was our topic today and we just wanted to share with you so that you uh, in turn can also look into uh, what is happening in your countries um, and to look for funding sources for clusters. The first one we wanted to share is from Spain where we have a program to support innovative business associations. The program is managed by the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Tourism and it basically supports three actions. So we have three different strands in the call that is um, published not every year, but nearly every year. One is to support the organization and coordination structures of clusters, um, of clusters that are maximum four years old. So to support uh, also newly built clusters and uh, the infrastructure. The second support uh, mechanism is for feasibility studies with the aim to prepare for other if possible, European calls as well. So to prepare clusters also to go um, for other and maybe also bigger uh, funding opportunities. And the biggest one is the digital transformation, which um, has the biggest uh, biggest weight in the in the support activities. And what we want to highlight and what we think is interesting is that you can have possible consortia for these calls. Is you can either apply for them as a cluster organization itself. It can be between at least three SMEs plus the cluster organization, or it can also be uh, between at least two cluster organizations. So here for the Spanish program, there are different possibilities. Um, and I think it offers different opportunities as well for the cluster organizations to develop their projects. Regular budget for the program is 8 million euros. Um, and we have an extraordinary RF budget for, from 2022 with 50 million euros to support um, these actions and to uh, develop clusters. And the second example, we've been speaking about Poland. Um, that's an interesting case here. The funding comes from the European Funds for Modern Economy. Um, it's an operational program that was adopted in September 2022, funded under the ERDF the funding period of 2021 and 2027. And they make an explicit reference to supporting clusters under the priority business environment supporting innovation. And you have here the text. So you can see that in the um, in the text that says we support uh, the support for clusters under the program focuses on key national clusters and super regional growth clusters, and it is there to strengthen human and infrastructural resources, test new services, build platforms and internationalization. So the support is um, adaptable to the level of the cluster development and relates to the implementation of new services for clusters or the companies. And there will be calls launched 2023. So this is also an example I wanted to share with you. So please have a look at what is happening in your countries, uh, in your national uh, policies and funding sources to um, get support for the classes. And with that, back to you, Jennifer. Thank you very much, Nina. I know we are a little bit over time, but there's been a lot to say today. As always, you will find all the details in the links on our chat, but also on the website as well. We're going to be taking a end of year break. We're back on the 11th of January to talk about the SME relief package. And you can see there on the slide, future dates for your diary. So perhaps put those in as well. You will also be sent a survey. So please do fill that in. And I know it's a little bit of time out of your day, but we would love to hear your thoughts on how we're doing. So thank you very much. Have a great day. And if you're getting a holiday sometime soon, have a great end of year. We'll see you again in January.